Hi guys, Craig Beals from Beals Science. Now, I'm standing in front of a butcher shop and I never would have thought I would say this, but this experiment starts right here at a butcher shop. And sometimes when it comes to chemistry and it comes to biology, those two worlds collide at a butcher shop. So what am I doing? Picking up a liver, of course, because in this science experiment, I wanna see how a liver acts when it interacts with hydrogen peroxide. The liver's a magical organ that's in just about all vertebrates, and it does a lot of detoxification of the body from all of the things that enter the body through metabolism. So I've got some hydrogen peroxide here. This is 3%. This is the stuff that your mom puts on your wounds just to make you squeal and watch it bubble up. It doesn't really do anything according to science when she puts it on there. But here's what we're gonna see. Look what happens when I drip it on the liver. Isn't that awesome? It bubbles up, makes these white bubbles, almost like a foam. So I thought, hey, this looks good. Now, what if I get out the really good stuff? In chemistry, we use 30% hydrogen peroxide. So this is, the other stuff was 3%. This is 30%. And look, it just foams up instantly into a big white poof ball. It's awesome. So what the heck is going on here? It turns out the liver is full of an enzyme called catalase. It's a protein. And that enzyme actually breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So that's what we're seeing here is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide happening by this biological protein that's in the liver. And I wanna see if this is just creating a hole in the liver or what it's doing. So I'm gonna wipe it off. And look, there's actually very little damage. There's some discoloration and some foam on the top, but very little damage. Now I've got six pounds of liver and a whole bunch of hydrogen peroxide. I wanna see this catalase in action. And I wanna talk about what's going on here. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, and the catalase breaks that down into H2O, which is water, and O2, which is oxygen gas. So we're taking H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, and turning it into water and into oxygen gas. That's what happens in your body naturally. Your body produces hydrogen peroxide when it breaks down food and metabolism, but then your liver and several other organs in your body that have catalase in them break that down and make it into something that's no longer harmful for your body which is water and oxygen gas all those bubbles are bubbles of oxygen gas and water and seeing all these bubbles has got me thinking i wonder if we can actually quantify how many bubbles are coming off of here and really look at the difference in 3% hydrogen peroxide and 30% hydrogen peroxide. So I said, ah, if we want more bubbles, we better get out some bubble juice. So I got Don dish soap, poured it in, and then took out some 3% hydrogen peroxide. This is the stuff that your mom pours on your wounds just to watch you squeal. And then I took a, a chunk of liver and dropped it in. Now, I didn't expect it to happen very quickly, so I time-lapse this over about five minutes. Not a huge change. In fact, it was even slower than I thought, but it just kind of kept growing. Then I went for the 30%. Now the 30% hydrogen peroxide is really bad news stuff. So I put the same amount in there, the same size liver, and whoop, dropped it in. And look, this is over the same amount of time. Look at the amount of foam. And sure, that's nice, but I think it's time we introduce a catalyst that'll make this happen a whole lot quicker. We're gonna see that same thing happen, but instead of using a biological catalyst, we're gonna use a chemical catalyst, in this case, potassium iodide. Same procedure, 25 milliliters of dish soap. So extra just in case, 25 is good, 40 is better. Then 10 grams of potassium iodide going in here. You can see that's solid. And then I'm gonna dissolve that in a little bit of water. So about five milliliters of water, enough to keep it nice and dissolved. And 50 milliliters of the good stuff. Hydrogen peroxide. 
30%. Call this elephant toothpaste because elephant have really big teeth. And if elephant have really big teeth, they need really big toothpaste. But I'm missing one thing. One second. Elephant are just like humans. You gotta have good looking toothpaste and you gotta have a little mint down the side so there's some blue mint going in. And then you should have some red cinnamon going down. Got some of that here. Give it that nice toothpaste look, especially for those reluctant elephants that don't wanna brush their teeth. Have a couple kids like that. Here we go, potassium iodide and hydrogen peroxide elephant toothpaste. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So that shows that catalyst, really, look at this. That shows that catalyst perfectly. And this is hot, this is an exothermic reaction, so it's releasing heat right now, and it's releasing oxygen gas. I can feel a little bit of that heat coming off of there, but now, well, now we can go brush the elephant's teeth. You know, elephant toothpaste and hydrogen peroxide is one of the other favorites in the lab because it's a real good attention getter. Especially the little kids love it. They love to think about, oh man, you're actually making toothpaste for elephants? Well, no, I wouldn't recommend using any of this on elephants, but it's cool nonetheless. I hope you like what you're seeing. We've got a whole bunch more going on here at Beals Science, including some other things with hydrogen peroxide, some explosions. And then if you go to BealScience.com, I've got a whole bunch of help with your chemistry, with your biology and other things as well. But the main point here is keep on learning. What do you think? Well, this is my favorite thing that you do. Because, I don't know, it's just, it's cool. I really like it. I love elephants. What do you think about science? I love science. Why? Because it's fun, cool. What are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs>